you're seeing a strong day for retail. Uh, I'm sure you're going to try to link this to the tax reform proposal, no? Well, actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to link it to just the strong economy under President Trump. We've got the highest consumer confidence in 17 years, the lowest unemployment in 17 years. And I think what you saw was, was Americans who are feeling more confident about their own circumstances at home heading out to retailers and spending this holiday season, which has been a, which has been a great, uh, great improvement from previous years. All right, Mark, but you know this. I mean, you've been in politics for, for decades now. And when you've got, we just had former Senator uh, Kent Conrad on, a top Democrat formerly of the Senate Budget Committee. And he's saying, hey, wait a minute. What about deficits? What about the budget in terms of government spending? So as we head into this new year, there are a lot of folks who, number one, are unsure about this tax plan, but they're also unsure about what it means to the national deficit. What do you say to folks who are concerned about national debt? Well, I find it laughable that Democrats are now suddenly concerned about the deficit <laughs> and the debt when they when they more than doubled it in the previous eight years. But here's the thing, and we have seen this time and time and again, is that when you cut taxes, you put more money in the pockets of hardworking Americans. They spend it, the economy grows, and you actually get more government revenue in, in the end. In eight of the 10 years following the historic Reagan tax cuts, government revenue was higher than before the tax cuts. The problem with the deficit is on the spending side. And and that's where we need Republicans and fiscal conservatives to hold strong, to invest in our priorities, like rebuilding our military, but also taking a look at some of the other areas where we can control spending, get the deficit under control by just delivering better and more efficient government. Mark, I got to push back here just a little bit, because when I'm looking into the new year and I'm looking in particular, I'm circling it on the calendar, January 20th, the partial government funding bill runs out. They've got to pass some type of plan. DACA on immigration is going to be a big issue. President Trump tweeted last week, week he wants to deal with Democrats, but on the issue of infrastructure, that is code word to a lot of Republicans is more government spending. Can he pass an infrastructure bill next year and can he deal with the Democrats to do so? Well, as we've seen already, when the when the president put forward an earlier transportation uh, and infrastructure proposal, it was talking about 200, 200 billion dollars in federal spending, along with 800 billion dollars from state, local, and private entities. And we've seen here in the state of Indiana, where where I'm from and where I am right now, what we can do when we pr when we partner with the private sector to deliver better transportation solutions and actually improve roadways, bridges, and uh, and our rails. These things can be done if we just bring in the private sector, work with state and local governments. And I think that's what you're going to see with uh, President Trump next year, bringing an infrastructure plan together that can bring in federal dollars, yes, but also un unleash the power of state, local and private entities, and then trust the mayors and governors out there to invest in the infrastructure needs in their communities. Yeah, so leave it to the states and using that lowering of the corporate tax rate to try to uh, get some repatriation of funds back into the U.S. Quickly, uh, Mark Lauder, to you, what's the big story that you think has flown under the radar that you think is going to dominate headlines or be a big factor in 2018? Well, I, I think that the economic growth, and while, while you have covered it quite a bit, and we've talked about it already here today, I think that will continue to go up. I think that is going to, uh, as people start spending that tax reform money, you're going to see GDP soar. You're going to see businesses bringing uh, dollars back into this country, investing in their, uh, in their companies, hiring workers increasing wages. That's all a great thing. And I also think that the uh, that the U.S. leadership on the world stage, uh, we're really starting to see that come into focus as the world rallies around North Korea. We're cutting the budget with the United Nations. And the president is really doing the things that he said he was going to do about changing the way America is viewed on the world stage and being a leader again. Let me follow up on that to your point about the world stage. Uh, Vice President Mike Pence, your old boss, uh, just uh, completing a, a, an international uh, trip. He's been uh, well around the world this year. But in terms of where North Korea is headed, earlier today, the administration announcing two more additional sanctions to folks in North Korea. I mean, with the Winter Games coming up in South Korea, uh, is, is this really going to come to a head then in terms of or what role do you think the Olympics are going to play uh, in, in the Korea back and forth? Well, I hope that the Olympics are viewed as a giant, uh, as a games for peace. Bring people together under the one thing that bring that brings all the world together, which is sports, where we can talk and we can compete, but we can do so uh, in a friendly way and support our countries. But this is also an opportunity for North Korea to show that it wants to be a wants to join the world community. If they can't, if they can control themselves during these Olympic games, show they want to be willing partners on peace. Stop the t the testing. Stop the uh, demonstrations. 
and then maybe we can see down the road what we can talk about. The end goal here is to get nuclear weapons off of the Korean Peninsula. That's what the president has said. That's what the world has said. And this will be a great opportunity to move that conversation forward.